Hey, it's Camo with the National Access Show presented by Solace North Gulch Apartments, where taste matters. Uh, cool guest today. She was actually on the show playing guitar a short while ago, and she impressed me so much that I said, you got to come back and be on the show for your own self. Her name is Katrina Burgess. Burgoyne. Katrina Burgoyne. <laughs> I get it. Thanks Good for having to me today. You. I know, it's going to be fun. Uh, have a seat. It doesn't feel like that long ago since I, no. I was here, so... Um, it, it's funny because there are maybe half a dozen times over the course of doing this show that people that have been in accompanying somebody that have just blown me away and said, you got to come in and do the show. Oh, so, so, well, thank you. Um, it's good to have you here. That's cool. Thank you for having me. Now, you're a native of Australia. I am. You're a convict. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from a small country town called Gunnedah, which is near Tamworth, Tamworth which yeah. I know you know about Tamworth. Yeah. So it's the country music capital of Australia. So it's like Australia's it's national. Actual, it's national sister city. Uh-huh, yeah. that's right. So that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. So I grew up around country music playing in my ears since I was a little kid. So it only seemed natural that when I picked up the guitar that it was going to be country. So Did you ever play Tamworth? Yeah, I think yeah. I did like 18 years wow. um, and playing Tamworth um, before I left Australia. Yeah. Um, you know, and I remember going there before playing there, but I used to go on t you know, it's kind of like I grew up starting, I was about 14 when I hit the stage and I went in every single talent quest in Tamworth you possibly yeah. could. So I started on the stage and I don't know, um, you know, I know you've got connections in Tamworth. Yeah, Jody Crosby and John Well, Moore. I think Jody used to, and probably John maybe, yeah. um, used to judge the talent quest these yeah. when I was a little kid. So, yeah. yeah. And, and Jody, with her sister, the, the uh, Crosby sisters, yeah. they were huge. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kelly, I know she definitely, for sure, um, judged talent quests. Yeah. So. Mm. I'll say hi to them. Please. Yes, please <laughs> do. I saw them at Tamworth at the last festival I went yeah. to this, uh, in January. That's yeah. It is a huge festival, and but they said it's it's like this small town of Tamworth becomes Nashville for what's it ten days? Yeah. So it's music everywhere, and then as soon as the festival's gone, it's just back it's, to being a small town again. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's good fun, and and when people kind of ask what's what does it what's it like in Nashville, I say it's exactly like the Tamworth Country Music Festival, but all year round. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a NASA festival. We're always bugging you to come down and, yeah. and do something. Different. You should do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you moved to Nashville when? I've been living here for about two and a half years now. Um, I came out here in two thousand and nine, uh, which is ten years ago. And I remember, honestly, I dated a guitar player at the time in Australia. Uh, he's a producer and a guitar player in Australia. Um, he tours with a lot of the big acts and we came out here and he'd take me to, you know, like the time jumpers and yeah. all the, you know, musicians, musicians yeah. sort of shows. And I remember leaving Nashville, uh, thinking, oh man, I hate Nashville. I don't ever really? want to go back there. And I think honestly, if I really be honest with myself, um, I feel like it was just because I knew I wasn't good enough. You know, when you're looking at that kind of, uh, level of musicianship and yeah, there's making, nothing more intense. Yeah, there was kind of no in between that I saw in yeah. that time. Um, I knew I wasn't good enough to be here, so I I spent time in Australia and I released a record in Australia and um, it did pretty well for myself. It made me eligible to move to this country if I wanted to do that in the future. Anyway, um, I ended up him and I dated for many years, like six years, and. He was touring with, have you heard of Casey Chambers? Yeah. Yeah, so he was over here touring with Casey and he came to Nashville and he says, I think you really need to go back to Nashville. I think, I feel like you need, you need to be there. And so that was in 2011. So I made a little wish to come back to Nashville back then. And uh, it took me until 2015 to be brave enough to get on that plane by myself. Um, I had one friend, one really good friend that lived here and I rented a room off him and if it wasn't for him I don't know if I would have been brave enough to come over. It was just kind of perfect timing. Yeah. Um, 
And so I came out for three months and I say for a whole year to do it. Only Australian well, dollar, you know you're Canadian, yeah, yeah. right? So <laughs> our dollar doesn't rank up very good. Yeah. So I remember I was three months here uh, in 2015 at Root. I was allowed in the country for 90 days. I wrote 70 songs. <laughs> I wanted to make it count, you know. Yeah. And I remember by the last uh, three weeks, I was so broke. I used to walk. I used to walk six miles down West End Avenue from to Sylvan Park yeah. to Midtown wow. to go to co rides because I couldn't afford an Uber or any taxi wow. or anything. Um, and then I ate toast for three weeks. Like I'm telling you, ladies, <laughs> the don't. Nashville diet. I know. Yeah. Like I put on a whole dress size. Like yeah. don't ever do it at home. Don't yeah. try it at home. But I in that time. I remember walking down West End Avenue this one, and it was the middle of summer, and the glue used to melt on my shoes. Like I love, I love. It's such a story of romance for me. Like <laughs> it's like I really wanted to be here that bad, and the glue would melt on my shoes. So I was basically like walking with a sandal, yeah. kind of like hopping home <laughs> the whole way. And I would glue, reglue. I got enough money, and I reglued my sandal. <laughs> every night yeah. and then I would wow. do it again the next day. It was hilarious. I look back and it just it's such a romance. There's a Laura McKenna song that I love. It's as how romantic is that? And I thought, man, how romantic is that? Nashville is my love, yeah. you know. Um Well it's great after after hating it. Yeah. Then you loved it. Yeah. And I I really found my space, my place here. It was it was weird. I felt like I found this community of songwriters that I didn't discover last time I was here. You know, back in, 10 years ago, you could just walk into the Bluebird Cafe yeah. um, and you'd see these great writers. Um, but still, yeah, I think I'd say in the open mic at the Bluebird 10 years ago. Um, but it's still, it was like either this kind of level or this kind of level. I couldn't find the in-between. And I finally found, I finally found where I fit in the pecking order of Nashville. You know what I mean? So... I went home to Australia and I moved in with my mother uh, in Gunnedah. I went back home to Gunnedah and I was there for, honestly, this, by the way, this three month trip, I put everything in the storage. I sold everything I could. I moved out of my house. I was homeless. So I got back around to Australia, moved in with my mum, and I saved for about 14 months. It took me to move back here. And I landed here with three suitcases. Yeah, my guitar. Yeah, you've done the same yeah. thing. Yeah, two suitcases. Two suitcases. The Atlantic twice. You. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's an adventure, and it's kind of funny. It's like when you shed all the things yeah. you don't really need, it, you're just down oh to it. I, I know. It's it's just a it's almost really freeing because, like George Carlin said, it's just stuff. Yeah. And, and everything is just a place for your stuff. So. You can get all your stuff into a couple of suitcases. I tell you what, I wish I could just say, oh, mom, it's just stuff, throw it out. Because I have so yeah. much stuff at my mom's house that she would love for me to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, all those books, like years of books and stuff like that, where it's like, oh, do you get rid of that? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the hard thing with books. Yeah. You're, if you're like me with books. Yeah. Uh, I don't want all of that. Yeah, going. it's funny. You just never know when you're, you know, I might be there for vacation and go, oh, I want to read, read a book. Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. But yeah. So, so you found your spot here in Nashville? Yeah, so I moved out. I, I always feel like this journey for me has, uh, there's always been some form of resistance. You know, I remember when I was about 16 years old, I got management um, by a group called the Pub Group in, mm -hmm. in Australia. And uh, everyone that was picked up and managed by this company, uh, most of them got signed to major labels. So uh, there was a family band that got signed to EMI. There was another girl that got signed to Sony. Um, and I thought, wow, this is like, my time's not far away. You know, I was kind of in the right crew, in the right crowd. And um, I remember um, as kind of as time goes on, I always feel like I was the one that never got picked, you know? And so when I, and I've always been that person, it's like, you know what, you wait long enough, but then it goes, I feel like life is just saying, you know what, you've just got to roll up your sleeves and make it happen. Yeah. You know, it's like you don't wait for an opportunity, you make an opportunity. Um, and so um, I went through the process, I did the independent release in Australia. I was fortunate enough to uh, 
be nominated for two Golden Guitar Awards, which are Big CMAs, deal, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a Golden Guitar loser. <laughs> Didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't win. Um, but I was really happy. Have you heard of the band O'Shea? Oh, yeah. They, they were with him. Here. They yeah. won the new talent. We're looking to get them on the show, too. So. Oh, they're great people. Yeah. Really good people. I love them. Uh, so they won the new talent the year that uh, I was nominated. And then I kind of looked at it all and I, I went into this two years of, uh, you know, I just self, you know, healing and I needed to go through this process of who am I? What are, you know, I worked so hard for this. Where do I go from here? You know? I, I do that every few years. It's crazy, isn't it? It's hard. Yeah, it sucks. It, it never goes away. Yeah. So, um, and then that kind of led me to, um, funny story, it led me to one night. Uh, I was single for the first time in my adult life. I was about, I actually won't say ages. I was single for the first time in my adult life. And, um, I was always in like really long term relationships yeah. and I had a few drinks and I went out to a bar and like just the men were hitting on me and I was just like this is disgusting. So I went home this one night after a few drinks, I was a little bit buzzed and I was on Facebook and this advertisement popped up. That was the best place up. to be when you're when yeah. you drinking. Yeah, I know right? <laughs> this advertisement popped up and it said apply for the next season of The Bachelor Australia. So what? I did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so long story short, uh, in 2014, I was on The Bachelor Australia. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, now most people would do a drunk dial, but not yeah, you. Not you me. I was like, yeah, not me. I was like, yeah, I woke up the next morning and I don't even remember applying for it. It's very funny. <laughs> uh, I got this, uh, this email saying, congratulations, we want you to come in for an interview. Yeah. So I was like, what? <laughs> Wow. Uh, funny, yeah. And but this is while you were here. This is not in Australia, oh, 2014, okay. before I came out here for the first time. And I remember I was battling with mental illness at the time yeah. and I was medicated and I thought if I can get through this process without, um, with feeling proud of who I am, uh, I'm going to get off my medication. And, uh, and it became, it became this obsession. I, I learned a lot. I read a lot of yeah. books about self-help. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like going on a red MD and you have all these symptoms of dying. Yeah, I know, die. I know, I know. <laughs> and so I, I, but it's funny, that process for me, it's like people go, how was the time on The Bachelor? I went in there really naive, thinking I might meet the love of my yeah. life. I don't know what I was thinking. I was very naive. But I know it's silly, right? But what I did was, is I ended up, I'm quite, strangely, I'm quite introverted. Like I need to, yeah. yeah, I need that inward time. And so I removed myself from the group and I'd sit in the garden and write songs. And I hadn't done that. I hadn't actually just spent time to write and create wow. and play, right? For probably a year to 18 months, two years. And it wasn't just, it, that journey didn't just become about me if I could get through it, I'm going to come for a medication. It was about, I'm going to come for a medication and then I'm going to take that trip that I've always wanted to take to go to Nashville. So it kind of led me, it, it, was, it was kind of so divinely pointed to Nashville. It was, yeah. But it hasn't been an easy journey since moving here. It's been a, a tough one. But yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. You want to do a song? Yeah, absolutely. And we'll, we'll talk more about your, um, your journey. I thought... Oh, maybe I've seen that. I've got a brand new song that I've had on my play for you guys. That's cool. We like brand new stuff. But maybe, I wonder if I, I might play this song. I wasn't okay. planning on playing this one. But I thought, I remember the day I wrote this song. I was walking, it was on one of those walks home down yeah. West End Avenue. With and sandals. With my unglued sandals. And this song for me was the moment where I knew I needed to move to Nashville. I, I thought, I felt in my heart that I'd written something really special and it could potentially do something well. It's been many years, oh, three years I think, since then. I don't know, I can't do maths. Three, four years. Um, and nothing's happened of it yet, but um, if you just close your eyes, and I want you to just visualize Lady Antebellum. And then if you could visualize my bank account, and all the money going up in it, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> Here we go. This is a duet. Oh, I see it's 
not taken It's vodka straight on ice Sure I'll have another I'll be here a while Yeah, I'm from around here But I grew up in Atlanta If you really want to know What brought me here tonight I'll tell ya Listening to the, like, I have a love for Americana music. Yeah. Um, and I somehow kind of fit in Americana. I'm not really sure. I'm just on the fringe of country and Americana. You're not alone. I think a lot of people don't know yeah. quite where they fit. Around. Yeah. But you've got people like uh, like Daryl Scott and Patty Griffin yeah. uh, who would record their songs and then it would get taken away by another big artist. Uh, a friend of mine, the producer Joe West. Uh, and a songwriter, he, he wrote uh, hits for Keith Urban and Toby Keith. He always said that he produced his demos as though it were going to be a finished album yeah. that he could put out. Wow. Um, he said, you know, some people, they just want guitar vocals. He said, but I always did mine just full production. Yeah. Like I was going to release it myself. Wow. Because if nobody cut it, then I can't. Yeah, that's great. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So tell me more about, you know, you, you moved to Nashville and how you still have to struggle here. Yeah. So it's really funny. I, uh, in 2015, after the three months here, the last week, I was getting all these publishing meetings and they're like, nice. you need to move to Nashville. Yeah. Um, and I remember 10 years ago, Daryl Scott, uh, I did a writing, songwriting workshop show with him and he said, you should, you need to move to Nashville. Um, and, but I just didn't know where I belonged at that time. But um, 
So after the three months here, I had all these publishing meetings. It's just like, oh, apparently you lived in Nashville. Um, and then I played the Bluebird Cafe the last week of my trip. My mum calls me up. She said, oh my gosh, how was it? And I just ended up breaking down in tears. I said, mum, I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm exhausted. But um, honestly, I, um, I, my trip here, so I landed with three suitcases and my guitar and I, I went through the process. I seriously, I had three months worth of savings. So I kind of prepared myself like I did the first time around. And um, I wasn't sure what was gonna come next. And I just thought, I'm gonna to have to try and figure it out. So I found venues around town. I just took any gig I could get um, and I started. Because you're a visa, well, you can't get a job as a bartender. You you have to make a living from music. music. Yeah. That's the way your visa is. Yeah, so uh, basically, through the stress of, you know, moving countries, I'm out here on my own trying to figure it out. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I somehow built a business in three months. Um, so like, you know, so we're surviving. The first year I did really well. Um, you know, I was doing a lot of songwriting and, um, you know, no great publishing opportunities had popped up at that point. Um, but, yeah, so I was, I was doing, but I was surviving, you know, I was doing, like, I was doing what a lot of people had moved to town to achieve, you know. So, um, and then what happened was, is I ended up falling sick for about 18 months since living here. So, you know, Nashville is the allergy capital. Yes, I know that well. Do you get the allergies <coughs> as well? the poster child. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, wow. Yeah. Like um, the one they put on the TV and say, you could be like this, or... Uh, <laughs> like, uh, kind of oh, you yeah. poor thing. Yes. Oh, well, I'm just going to... Yeah, go ahead. By the way, you're watching the National Access Show. My special guest today is Katrina Burgoyne, uh, the convict. Uh, sorry, the convict. I, see, I, I worked in <laughs> I London. You know. I, I worked in London, and for a big company that we we did advertising all over the world, and we had people from all over the world working with us. So everybody that was Australian was a convict. <laughs> and everybody from New Zealand, we called Australian just because it would get under their skin. That is so great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, that's probably why when we did the interview, you had such a sense of humor. And all, I thought you had a bit of an Aussie sense of humor. We got in the car and I'm like, uh, your sense of humor, but it would be from your time in England. Yeah. You're Canadian, yeah. so Canadians and Aussies sort of had a similar sense of humor. Yeah. And you've obviously heckled a lot of Aussies before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a daily practice thing. Oh, that's uh, so funny. But you, you talk about that with a sense of humor. Being an Australian in Nashville, um, I found that with American music, sometimes that doesn't always accept what goes on outside of the United States. A great example was Robbie Williams, who yeah. huge, huge star in the UK and everywhere else. Very popular in Canada, but couldn't couldn't, get, couldn't break through here. Yeah, did everything he could to break through here, and couldn't. And and Australian artists and Canadian artists, they go through the same thing. They're very big in their own countries. Like James Blundell was the first. Oh yeah. You know, I really like Blue Healer was the first song I heard of his. And I went, wow, this guy's great. Yeah. Couldn't break through here. Yeah. But then. You get the odd names that, like Keith Urban, yeah, who comes here, and does that kind of set as an example that well, if Keith can do it, and he's a key, well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. You know, if he can do it, then I can do it. I think too. I think there's a little difference, and the reason why I say that is because. Americana Festival, a lot of Australians come yeah. out. That's sort of more. Americana yeah. Festival is. Uh, Americana music seems to be much more accepting of international yeah, artists. Yeah. Country music, not so much. Well, I remember sitting in my first sort of writer's round. Yeah. You know, I remember going to Tin Roof Revival on a Tuesday night mm -hmm. and sitting there and you know, you're looking at writers, uh, like I know Luke Holmes started going there and uh, that's sort of where his crew used to always be and play songs and 
You know, I remember sitting there and going, man, these girls are way too country for me. As in, like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not country enough to be on the stage. Um, and, you know, our culture is vastly different. Um, yeah. Guns are illegal. Yeah. We don't really hunt. I think we hunt, like, they go pig chasing, which they yeah. get the dogs out to chase the pigs and they chase it on the night. Yeah. yeah, but it's a different kind of hunting. It's a different culture than yeah. America. Like, so, like, yeah, it's the same thing in Canada. Though. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot of the things that they'll talk about in, in their songs, I didn't even know some of the language. It's a different yeah. language. And I think, uh, you know, people like James Blundell, um, I love him, I think he's incredibly talented, uh, but he hasn't absorbed himself in in the States like yeah. Keith Urban has, for right. example. You know, Keith was here for 10 years or something before. Yeah, yeah, he's an overnight he, success. Yeah, 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 yeah. And but the thing is, is Keith had kind of became a part, you know, like, I yeah. listen to his new song at the moment, Could We Were or something, talks about a small town with a water tower skyline. Yeah. You know, now we don't have water tower skylines in Australia. Yeah. You know, you know things like that where um, he sings very much American songs. I feel like he writes, well, he his sings out of the American market. His early stuff was really, really country. And you know, like his co cover of Country Comfort. You know, oh yeah. Song, it's like, whoa, th this is almost Elton John good, mm -hmm. you know? That um, Ranch album was one of my yeah, favorite albums. Right album. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he he really got the culture. Yeah. Right at the beginning. Yeah. Um, I feel like um, his sort of you know his uh, the biggest male artist in yeah. America. Yeah. You know, in Australia, his class is pop music. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting. They don't really put him as a country artist in Australia. Yeah, and charts work the different way. I mean, in the UK, there is no country chart. Wow. So a group like the Shires, who are incredible, uh, they had the debut on the pop chart. Wow. Um, so that that's a whole different thing. And I don't think even now, as popular as country has got there, I don't think they're ready for a country chart. I don't think there are enough homegrown acts to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. But the cultural thing is, and, and another point that I noticed too is when I talk to artists who have come here from different countries to make it, there seems to be much more of a determination to make it because you put it all on the line. Yeah. You know, it's different if you can go back to another state. I, I do find. Um that I I get you know people say that say like I go to publishing meetings when I first arrived and they go you've only been here for a year yeah you know and I think yeah I've been writing songs for you know this is my twentieth year of writing songs yeah, but doesn't that doesn't matter, matter. It doesn't matter it doesn't matter yeah. yeah yeah and it's it's one of those things that felt like I beat my head against a brick wall or well, even things that like, there's a good thing because it's like credit report and they can't follow you from country. Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> true, too. That's true. I've got good credit in Australia, though. Yeah. If only you could. Yeah. It yeah. took me, like, two years to build a credit yeah. rating here. <laughs> yeah, I know. So funny. But, yeah, when you come from a different country, you there are so many people like you and I that come here with a couple of suitcases. Yeah. And you, this is it. Yeah. There's no plan B. Yeah. You know, whereas if you come here from New York or California or whatever, well, you can just go back to your home state. Yeah. But. Even, I, you know, I, sometimes I get really envious of the people who could just go home for the weekend and recharge, you know, because there's nothing like home, you know, yeah. like that feeling of recharging, you know. For me, it's just like, you know, I may as well stay for a month if I yeah. go home, yeah. you know. And then I'm on the Australian dollar, so I have to work extra hard trying yeah. to pay my bills. <laughs> it's hard. But, um, you know, I do think, I really do think that being Australian has taught me a really great work ethic mm -hmm. because it took me, you know, I have only been here for two and a half years now, yeah. but it took me years to just get here. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I've really wanted it. It yeah. hasn't just been something like, oh, let's just throw everything in the car and yeah. move to Nashville. It's yeah. been something yeah, that I've had to fight for. Yeah, yeah. It's been something I've had to fight for. Um, 
it hasn't come easy, but I do think, you know, at the end of the day, I have days where I'm like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, I get jealous of people or um, I, I get envious and, and, and think this is probably, well, this is why I wanted to sing it in my new song. But I wrote this on last week, so it's a brand new song, I'm going to have to use the lyrics to make sure I don't mess them up. But, you know, there's a lot of different characters in this this city. There's the characters where, and I get so envious, and then I have to rem remove myself and go, I'm on my own path, and everything will happen in its own time, in whatever way it's meant to happen, you know. Uh, the worst case scenario is that I'm just, I'm just going to do it because I love it, yeah. you know. Like, I'm still always going to write songs, I'm always going to record them in some way, you know. Um, but uh, I'm at the moment I've been writing and focusing on writing for a record of my own. So um, I'm just in the process of picking songs, writing those final songs. Um, I'm in discussion at the moment with publishing and and uh, figuring all this out. I got publishing in Australia which really look after me. But um, you know it's trying to figure out how to release a record you know when you when it's hard enough as it is life is hard so you can't yeah. just pull a couple of grand out of you know your back pocket and, and people take shortcuts in different places <clears throat> they uh will you know they'll forsake well i don't really have to get need to get my music mastered like, oh yeah yeah you do yeah 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 you know it's all those things where you think oh i can save a few bucks if i don't master it or I can save a few bucks here, and this guy's not really a producer, but he, he can produce, and he's a guitar player. And it's like, no, spend the money, do it right. Get, yeah. Get the producer that produces. Get, yeah. Get the master. Get it done right. It's so hard. I know it is. Yeah. When, when all you got is what you're making. When yeah. You're gig, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I've been gigging like crazy lately. I've been doing, like last week I did seven gigs. I'm just like trying to squirrel money away so I can release. But, um, so I was saying before, I feel sick. I had a chronic sinusitis, I had two surgeries last year. Um, and I couldn't sing. And it was like that year of like, I'm here, I'm in Nashville, but couldn't sing. I struggled to pay my rent. So I, it was kind of like, Almost this year was back to square one again. Like it was back to zero. Man, did you go back to Australia because the healthcare system here is, is so wonderful and cheap. Yeah. Uh, did yeah, you yeah. have to go back to Australia? To um, you know what? To be honest, I feel like someone is... I feel like if I was meant to move home, I would have moved home. Yeah. There's someone watching it but out for me and making sure I'm safe here. It's because... Either that or someone's putting you through hell because it's fun. <laughs> well, either that too, I right? know. So I went into a doctor's office. Mm -hmm. um, they told me it was going to cost me $1,000 just to get a, to have a look yeah. at my you know, story, the doctor. Anyway, they said, you might want to just call around and see if you can find someone cheaper. So I found someone cheaper, like an hour out of town. I went out of town and they looked at me. And I must have looked like a stray dog that day. I swear to you, like, and I was a mess. Like, I was like, could I look like this? I could I hardly talk? Um, and all I wanted to do was check. I just wanted to scope down my throat to make sure I hadn't got vocal damage. That was it. Because I couldn't figure out why I couldn't talk. Anyway, so then he looked at me and goes, your vocals are fine. He goes, they're a bit inflamed, you know, but uh, they're pretty fine. He goes, do you mind if I just do another, do That's I have to do an x-ray? a great pickup line, by the way. Yeah. You got yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he did an um, uh, x-ray yeah. and I had chronic sinusitis. Wow. And he walked, he, then he did an allergy test on me. I'm like, you know, my gosh, this is going to cost me a fortune. But he just did it just because I was so sick. And then he walks out of the room, he walks back in and he says, we don't normally do this, but you really, you really need someone to look after you right now. I was really sick. And he said, I just called a friend and we want to donate an operation for you. Wow. Yeah. So I got this, the first operation um, was the balloon plasticity yeah. thing. Uh, and it didn't work for me, so I had to go in and get another operation done. So I got two operations and I paid for the anesthesia, that's all I paid for. And so I was very careful. 
But I went back home to Australia for Christmas and I went for two months. It was meant to be two months. Yeah. Uh, but I had laryngitis all of February. Like I was still recovering from this operation. Couldn't talk. Um, I did one show and I had to have a steroid tablets for it to just sing. Yeah. Um, and then I came back to Australia to, I came back to that in America and I did like a three week tour and I was just singing, playing guitar and singing backing vocals in the choruses. And that's the only way I somehow survived and got through. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it was tough. And I actually, it's so funny, I met um, my partner, my boyfriend. He, uh, I met him like three weeks before I flew to Australia. And I'm like, I'm going to Australia, mate. See ya. Like, yeah. you know, we ain't going to keep talking in, in two months. Yeah. Anyway, um, I was so sick. I was thinking about not coming back. And he flew out to come get me. <laughs> it was very sweet um, but yeah so my journey here hasn't been the easiest but I always feel like it's just making you resilient you know like it's just it kind of, I think sometimes I really suck at being grateful for just today you know what I mean like I've always struggled with that uh, it's something I have to make a conscious effort of going oh wow like how beautiful is the painting on the wall yeah you know what I mean like I have to Consciously be in the moment and mindfulness is something I have to practice. And, and since you suffer from allergies, it's not looking at flowers and thinking how beautiful they are. Exactly. The, right. the clothes are punishment. The yes, are I know. Evil. And so, like, but the thing is, is that like little things, yeah. like being able to. I used to have a, like almost a near asthma attack just from walking up and down. So I had to take the elevator because I couldn't walk up the stairs. Yeah. Uh, cause I couldn't breathe. You know. So. Things like that, I, I don't take my health for granted at all, ever again. I don't drink much because it affects my mm. allergies. Okay. So, um, and I know if I can't sing, I can't make money. And it means I can't make a record. So, things like that. But I, I feel like I go to the gym now, I eat really healthy. Uh, I completely changed my life around the last six months. But for the better, for the better. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Like last night, uh, I went to see our maid. Oh, how is it? Yeah, it was killer. Yeah. yeah. But normally, I would be screaming and singing out loud, like all the lyrics, despite the people next to me, they have to be punished by hearing me sing. <laughs> but, but it's like, no, I, I, this is how I make my living. I yeah. can't, you know, I can't scream. Yeah. So. It's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I wish, you know, I wish you could go and enjoy a few drinks every now and then. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've kind of become, it's changed my, even like going out, at night time to see shows and stuff like that it's not the same it's kind of like it's not as i don't know it's a different energy yeah. now when you're not a little buzzed or just one drink in your hand you're drinking water or something you know but it's for the better yeah. so you wrote a new song i wrote a song the other week uh, i thought it'd be fun to play for you guys um you know as i said i feel like a, I i feel like i've seen so many people like particularly moving here. We come from, you know, a country of convicts, yeah. right? <laughs> so, Just so you know, Canada wasn't that way. I'm Canada, sorry. Canada it was, was, you know, smart, intelligent, employed <laughs> people. <laughs> not people that had been forced into a penal colony. Oh, well, I'm going to tell you something. So I'll, I keep wasn't... That, I'll, I, I, I'll try and keep back my yeah. air of superiority. Okay, okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, um, we actually moved my family, we're not convicts, by the way, just to let you know. Yeah, they all but, say that. Yeah. <laughs> we were um, innocent. We're innocent. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> so what happened was um, I think about like I think about the wealth in America. Like yeah. I could think like a middle aged child. It just blows my mind. Like a, a middle a middle uh, what's it, income family have like the most beautiful house I've ever seen in my life. Like <laughs> we don't yeah. have houses like you guys do, you know, like in back home. <laughs> yeah, well, I still, you know, they'll say, oh, that house is a quarter million dollars. And to me that, are you serious? That's, that's what rich people pay yeah. for a house. Yeah. That's the kind of background I come from. Yeah. Very working class and, and <laughs> man, a quarter of a million, I can't pay a quarter of a million for a house. Yeah. That's not, that's, yeah. So it's kind of like blowing my mind, but I did think about it, you know, like Australia, I'm going to sneak in and use this thing. Um, Australia doesn't um, have that many years of building wealth in our country. So um, 
But anyway, you know, I've often looked at the kids that mum and dad are paying, you know, I'm here playing seven nights a week yeah. just so I can write four days a week, you know. Um, and I, I get, I've, I've spent so much time getting jealous by people who can't have it a bit easier than what I do or, you know what yeah. I mean? But then I think, you know, it makes, I've got a good work ethic and stuff yeah. like that too. So everything comes, I'm, you know. But then I so I was thinking about the characters that are in Nashville that are trying to make it. So you've got the privileged kids, you've got the gorgeous girls that can bat their eyes and get into any room. You've got those hardworking bartenders that you know are saving their tips just so you know they could maybe record someday or just their chance to sing on stage. You know, uh, and then I threw my story in there as well. Cool. So this is called the next big thing. You're watching the National Access Show with Camo and my guest, Katrina Burgoyne. Here we go. Here's a clean cut, pretty boy, hair, smile, paying dues with daddy's money instead of his time. He sleeps all day, parties on time, but he's drinking with the boys, they'll get him signed. He bought a guitar, but nothing to say. you know, have maybe be doing, you know, got signed or whatever, you know, and that, you know, haven't sort of lived a journey like I've yeah. lived. Because I, you know, I've got so many friends that are killing it and yeah. doing so well and I love cheering them on and I, you know, but it's, there's normally four types of characters. There's those people that, you know, the, the Broadway warriors that are there and been singing for five years. I think, um, Adam Craig, I think he was downtown yeah. for quite a few years before he got signed, things like that. So I think that's like 
quite a diverse bunch of characters that you see in Nashville, as, as right? As you're saying, I, I pick it up on people that I know, and you know, the, the privilege ones that you know, mom and dad are paying for everything, and they've got a nice house in the gulch, or a nice flat in the gulch, and, yeah, and not really having to work hard for it. And, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I've got this little beat up car that I drive. You know, I actually do live in the Gulch, but I, <coughs> I live oh, in a... Now, see? <laughs> the convict. We, I'm innocent yeah. and I live in the Gulch. No, I live in the Gulch, but we live in a, I live in a place called Laurel House, which okay. is a, um, you know, it's a it's for musicians yeah. and for, you know, it's not for rich people in the Gulch. Yeah. But it's so funny, you know, I see so many kids who even live in the, that same apartment yeah. I live in, but they drive in with their BMW and I'm like, are you for real? Yeah. Here I am with my beat up little Nissan, but anyway. Yeah, that brings on a whole other discussion of whether you can truly be creative if you're not hungry. You know, hey, that's so true okay. too. I do. That'd be for another. We'll yeah, have to have you back. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks it's, for having me. I know you guys hadn't heard my stuff before. You just took a risk on me, so it's really sweet. Well, it's it's great when, like I say, an artist comes in and I'm impressed with the person that's backing them up, and you, you took, you did that. So, well, thank you. Uh, it's great to have you. How can people connect with you on socials and? All so it's KatrinaBurgoyne.com. Um, if everything's just on my website, you can get links to Instagram, Facebook, or it's Katrina Burgoyne, Katrina underscore Burgoyne. But if you sign up to my mailing list, uh, you can get the actual Nashville full band demo, cool. ready to be pitched, ready to be released. Um, you can get that song for free if you sign up to my mailing list. So it's my website homepage, just katrinaburgoyne.com, which is B-U-R-G-O-Y-N-E. Yeah, it, it's felt pretty much like it sounds, and I'll let you know the secret. My grandfather was one of four kids, born in Portsmouth, two went to Canada, two went to Australia. So, oh, really? Yeah, so I, I come, a fa come from a family of not convicts, and I have but, not convicts. But, wow, so, I don't believe so, it. So, not everybody in Australia is true. There you uh, go. <clears throat> although ours was probably more innocent than yours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching the Nashville Access Show with Camo, presented by Solus North Gulch Apartments, where taste matters. And my guest, Katrina Burgoyne. Man, it, it was so cool. Thank you me. so much for you, having me. It's been fun. We'll have to have you back again yeah. and talk more about stuff. Uh, when your stuff is released, or we're getting Yes, oh, it's, it won't be far away. I want to release. Uh, well, then you'll come back. Yeah. To, yeah. to have a coffee and chat. Perfect. Sounds Perfect. great. Uh, make sure you catch me, every, speaking of Australia, every Thursday morning with Jody Crosby and John Wolf at 88.9 Tamworth FM. About 9.30 in the morning, we're just, I'll play my pick of the week and we'll have some fun. And all across the UK on Chris Country, DAB Online, and on the app. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching.